Leave it to Spike Lee to drop the most relevant movie right now. Leave it to Spike Lee. Okay, The Five Bloods. Now, I have been loving Spike Lee's recent output. I was a huge fan of his last movie, uh, Black Klansman, which I think is one of his best movies ever, so I was super excited, naturally, for The Five Bloods, which just hit Netflix this past weekend. And let's talk about it. I'm very, very excited to talk about this one. Now, The Five Bloods follows four African-American soldiers who fought in Vietnam for America, who returned to Vietnam to recover the remains of their squad leader and also uh, uncover the gold that that squad leader helped them bury so that they could all kind of find financial success. But of course, this simple trip back to Vietnam is not simple. It carries with it a lot of past trauma and horrors. Now, like I said in the intro, this is one of the most relevant movies right now, especially with the Black Lives Matter protests going on and all those discussions happening. Spike Lee definitely knew exactly when to release this movie, and it just makes the experience all the more impactful. Now, I have to say this is one of the best acted movies, if not the best acted movie, I have seen so far in 2020. Everyone in this cast is firing on all cylinders. Everyone in this movie is so, so good. But like a lot of other reviews have been saying, the star of this movie, the scene stealer, is Delroy Lindo who has been in a wide variety of movies over the you know over the decades. He's been one of those like MVPs in a lot of movies that's popped up that you've probably seen his face, maybe didn't know his name, but you will after this movie. He is incredible in this film. There are a couple scenes where it could have been used as his Oscar reel easily. I mean, he see steals every scene in this movie. He completely portrays the PTSD that would come you know, with having to revisit, you know, a place where you experience so much violence and so much trauma. And he carries that and portrays that so well and with such a deft hand that it just kind of blows you away. I would not be surprised if he, his, if his name is in contention for Best Actor come the Oscars next year, if they do happen, as sad as that is to say. Now, as for the movie itself, I do think the only problem I would say I have with this movie is that it clocks in at about two and a half hours. It definitely doesn't need to be two and a half hours. There are definitely some scenes that go on a little bit too long, some scenes that could definitely be trimmed or just cut altogether, but I do think there's so much in this movie that really does work and why it's definitely worthy of a recommendation. Spike Lee is one of those great filmmakers who can entertain you but also educate you at the same time. And one of the best parts about this movie is that, yes, you get your Spike Lee entertainment value, which is always great. I mean, there are a couple sequences, one having to do with a rope, that's all I'll say, and then the climactic sequence that I'll say that happens toward the end of the movie two incredible sequences that Spike Lee really ramps up the tension, really knows how to shoot perfectly, and really kind of bring it home in the best way possible. And not only does this movie give you that entertainment value, but it also, you know, uh, educates you about how, you know, African-American soldiers felt about fighting in, you know, these various wars, including the Vietnam War, where they were fighting for freedom and for rights that they didn't even have back home, and they were just so mistreated as a result. And then you see the after effects of that, and how it plays with their minds, and how it kind of causes this PTSD along with everything they experienced in the war, and how it just kind of really kind of, you know, uh, broke them down as people. And it's heartbreaking to watch, it's heartbreaking to see, and it's perfectly portrayed here. But I really like that kind of uh, balance of education and entertainment, which I think Spike Lee is so damn good at. I mean, yes, this movie does have some action scenes that are, you know, exciting, very entertaining, but there are some great scenes just between characters having really hard-hitting conversations, tough conversations, some between a father and son, some between, you know, these friends, and some of these scenes, they're uncomfortable to watch, but they're necessary to see, and they're crucial to the power of this movie and to the overall impact of this movie, and I love that Spike Lee didn't shy away from those conversations. They're conversations that needed to be had and they needed to be confronted head-on, and I'm just happy that he went there on numerous occasions. He didn't pull back any punches, and I love that, and I would expect nothing less of Spike Lee. This is a powerful movie. It's a relevant movie. It's got some powerhouse performances alike, I said before. It's beautifully shot. It's a gorgeous-looking movie. I really love how Spike Lee kind of transitions between the past and the present using aspect ratio and, like, kind of using, like, uh, the grain of, like, kind of the 1970s and that era um, to kind of feel like you're being transported back to the Vietnam War. And in both the past and the present, there's always compelling things taking place. I mean, in the past, you're fleshing out these characters, you're kind of getting their experience of the war, you're understanding why they're so emotionally attached to their squad leader, who's played by Chadwick Boseman, turning in another great performance. And then you go to the present where you 
where you feel like that past has really informed that present and how it's kind of really transitioned into that present, which makes those past and present sequences kind of feel like this great symbiotic relationship where it doesn't feel like two separate movies trying to coalesce into one. It feels like one overarching story that where it feels like everything is kind of fitting into the right place. So I would say in the end, I really did enjoy The Five Bloods. It's definitely a little bit too long. It definitely could have been trimmed a little bit here and there, but I don't think that, you know, dulls its overall impact. It's a powerful movie, like I said. It's a relevant movie, like I said, and it's filled with some really unbelievably good performances, direction, and writing, and I really couldn't recommend it enough. I think it's a great movie. I definitely think if you're looking for something deep and something moving right now, definitely check out The Five Bloods on Netflix, where it is now streaming. So in the end, I'm going to be giving The Five Bloods, I'm going to give this movie a B+. I really did enjoy it, despite its length, and I definitely think it's one of Spike Lee's better movies, and I think that he's kind of on a roll recently, and I cannot wait to see what he tackles next. And yeah, couldn't recommend it enough. Definitely uh, start streaming this one. So that is my review of The Five Bloods. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you take it into consideration if you consider streaming this one or not. And make sure to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, more fun stuff like that. You will not regret it. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.